Um, I've been here for about two years working across various brands, um, have a, an area of expertise in purpose work um, specifically, and um, have in the past before my life in JKR worked with brands um, such as the NGOs and and worked in branding in areas, even organizations, even such as the UN. So, so very excited to be a part of, of this project in this brief. Um, so that's it for me. Do you have any questions before we kick off? No, no. Uh, and sorry, are you doing this project globally or is this just for international zone? Tristan? Sorry. Yeah, as on mute, sorry. Uh, it will be a global project. Um, yeah, it will okay. be implementation for, for be implemented globally so yeah so we've got a presentation with um we'll share with miguel in a couple of weeks and then we've got the full craft heinz board chair mid april i think it is okay um so yes yeah, so it's very much uh, a global a global um positioning excellent great um great so we will kick off with a very open-ended um <laughs> question and so again as Tristan said doesn't mind if we kind of bird walk off into different areas there's no right or wrong answers it's really um, just to kind of get your insight on um, kind of your view and your vision uh, um, with this new direction so the first question is just what does Heinz culture as agriculture mean to you uh, what is Heinz is sorry Heinz culture is agriculture what does that mean to you um, well, to me, I guess um, it, it probably means that we, uh, to me, we're very much a fruit and vegetable based company. Fruit and vegetable legumes is our, is our core. So to me, I think for us to be closer connected to agriculture and, and have that as part of something that represents our company is, is really quite important. Mm -hmm. Great. And um, so that leads me on nicely to the next question. So there are a few different facets of this positioning. And what I'd be interested to know um, is how important you think each is to the new positioning, the future direction of Heinz. So um, the first is how important is bring Heinz back to agriculture um, to the future direction of the business? I think very important. I think really very important. Um, you know, I think what we've been doing with um, tomatoes in particular, where we sort of start with a hind seed, you know, and we, we can trace all the way back to, to how we grow, what we do. I think that's really quite critical. And I think that's helped Heinz um, in the success in a way. Um, and I'd really love to see that with our other products in particular. Uh, you know, I'm, at the moment, I, I'm, I very much lead a sustainability agenda at Kraft Heinz and nutrition. So for me to be connected back to the roots of where we grow, how we grow, is really quite important. Mm -hmm. And when you think of um, kind of architect, uh, architecture, sorry, uh, agriculture, um, what, what, what kind of comes to mind? What do you think ag agriculture means for Heinz? Um, to me, I think for us, it really starts with the farming. It starts with the plant, it starts with the seed. And it very much starts with our connection to the farmers, the way we grow, uh, the way we treat the environment. Um, for me, I would personally love and something I'm trying to push a little bit more in the company is that we actually connect very much to um, growing in a way that we actually make the soil more nutritious and better to start with. So for me, I think that link right back is very, very important and it's very core to the type of products that we make not so much maybe in the US um, but when you think about our business from an international perspective it's very much based on fruit vegetables beans and legumes mm -hmm. and I think so naturally fits with you know starting and understanding what you're doing understanding the farming the practices the connection with the soil mm -hmm. the connection with the farmers and traceability through the whole um, system mm -hmm. And that, again, you, you're, you're uh, doing perfect segues for all of my questions. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Um, how, how important do you think becoming the largest plant-based brand on the planet is to the future direction of the business? I think it's really, really important to Heinz because I think very much, um, you know, we at the moment in the international zone, 80% of our products are already, already vegetarian. We just don't claim it. <laughs> so I think, you know, having a base of your product, bulk of your products that come from vegetables um, or legumes and lentils 
across the international zone, I think it, we very much have a real reason to play. And Heinz in particular under that brand has a real reason to play in that space. And in a way, to be leaders in that space. <laughs> um, I think other companies play in dairy or in more processed sorts of foods. But I think if you look at the traditional Heinz products, we have a real reason to play. Right. And finally, how important is um, becoming a brand that's good for the planet to the new direction of the business? Absolutely key. I think this is probably one of the biggest learnings um, the company has had. Um, two years ago, I went to the US to start drafting our sustainability commitments as a company. Um, and I think that it, it now has really become mandatory for investors, for employees, uh, and for future people in, in the business, uh, coming to the business or wanting to engage with the business, they're wanting to understand how we are treating the planet. Um, so I think this is becoming an absolute must do. Unfortunately, we're very behind the game. <laughs> So we have a lot of catch up, but I think it's absolutely essential. Mm -hmm. And um, it's interesting. So you, you I, I, again, no right or wrong answer. It's just an observation. It's really interesting. She talks about mandatory for investors, mandatory for people yeah. who are in the business, mandatory for people who want to engage with the business. But you didn't mention consumers. I'd just like to know um, kind of your views on on what this might mean, or or what this might mean. This kind of new proposition of being good for the planet for consumers. Yeah, no, look, I think definitely, you know, consumers have to be part of it as well. I think, you know, consumers will, will go along, will, will go along the journey. Um, I, I don't really know today, I mean, I think consumers are starting to become more savvy yeah, and starting to sort of really look at where their products come from, what their impact on the environment is, etc. So I think it's going to become eventually probably one of the deciding powers that consumers will use to make a choice. Um, I don't know how far along that journey they are yet. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, I'm a nutritionist. I come from a nutrition world. So for me, it's something that's quite important. So I can't use myself as a standard consumer, mm -hmm. really. Well, that makes perfect sense. Um, what about the new positioning excites you? Um, I think for me, it's a real shift for the company. We've always focused for the Heinz brand on quality um, and, and really, you know, trying to make sure we make the best products. We've been really not brilliant at telling people about it. Um, and we've really never really connected it to where the products will um, come, where the products come from. So, you know, we, we just talk about that we make things to the best quality standards, to the best nutrition guidelines, but we never really focus so much on the use of the best ingredients, how we grow the ingredients, where do we source things from? Who's the suppliers we, you know, we work with? You know, um, how we grow things, how we impact the environment. So I think it's a bit of a shift for the company to move, um, you know, in this direction. But it makes sense because when you think about it, if the interpretation of what H.J. Hines was thinking about quality was really towards, you know, almost like a pharmaceutical grade quality product. Whereas today, I think we're very yeah. much folks. That quality means to consumers something about how it's grown, how, where it comes from. It's much more rounded as well. So I think it definitely is an evolution. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really interesting. And there's this um, quote, I think that's really interesting uh, that um, Henry Hines said, Henry J. Hines, which was to protect the consumer by owning the product all the way from the soil to the table. And um, I think if we look at things like it, it, it's it's exactly right, like you were saying, this almost pharmaceutical grade of the product. But I think it's really interesting that that is still the case, but in the context yeah. of protecting us from kind of the impacts of climate change, as an example. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And I think um, you know this really fits quite nicely with the Heinz brand. If I compare it to the Kraft brand, they're very different. You know, to me, that Kraft is a very different sort of beast. Why do you think, what is that difference? I'd be interested to know what, why it fits with the Heinz brand as opposed to the kind yeah, of... Yeah, I think um, Heinz has always been a brand. I've been with the company now for 10 years. I've worked across, you know, pretty much all the markets. And everywhere I've gone, the one thing that I know has been consistent with Heinz is we don't compromise on quality. So we don't compromise on um, the ingredients. We don't compromise on... Um, 
on it has to always comply with nutrition standards it has to be of the best um, quality it's always made in a very consistent way uh, we try and minimize the use of any ingredients you know we try and keep things to a natural source and we focus constantly on making it better so for, even for example under the Heinz brand we've been removing salt and sugar since the 80s um, it fits with a portfolio as well because the portfolio of Kraft Heinz is mainly comes from fruit and vegetables it's what we do with it afterwards you know that might add some nasties to it craft to me is um it's just a processed food you know um they always they work towards quality standards but there's almost like this um understanding that you don't expect craft to be the most nutritious you don't expect craft to be uh, full of natural ingredients you know you expect craft to be something that delights you you know, it's a it's a stomach filler. It's a you know, it's an everyday food, but it doesn't necessarily need to be the most nutritious or the most cleanest. Whereas for Heinz, that's a mandatory. Mm -hmm. but to me, I think they're very different products. And if you look at their product portfolios, Kraft is um, you know mac and cheese, um, you know um, processed cheese slices, um, Capri Sun sugary drinks, Jello, you know. Um, Whereas if you look at the Heinz portfolio, it's made up of fruit juices, canned tomatoes, you know, ketchup, um, pasta sauces, beans, you know, meals, infant food. So they're very, very different um, uh, positionings <laughs> very for the company. Yeah, they, mm -hmm. And they still function like two companies in a way <laughs> mm -hmm. because of that. I'm just taking some notes. That's interesting here because there's almost two two kind of levels to this. So one is why is this the right direction for us to be taken, which um, you know I think you've kind of articulated very nicely uh, in the kind of first part, first few questions, and and then specific uh, specific reason why Heinz is the right brand to seize this opportunity and lead this shift. Um, with this vision in mind, what would be the impact on your area of the business? Um, yeah, well, I mean, I guess for me, this is a huge impact because obviously considering I work on driving um, nutrition, sustainability, um, and in particular, making the best food and sourcing the best, um, you know, ingredients for the planet, I think this is definitely very connected, you know, with my area of work. Um, and, and also the areas of work that I'm um, influencing the company to move towards is more around... Um, the use of, um, uh, you know, really understanding how we grow things as well. So from an agricultural perspective. Right. So what are the, what are kind of the tangible impacts that you think it would have on the business, on, on your area of the business? What, what, what kind of um, changes would you need to make? Sorry, I missed that question. I was just screaming at the kids. <laughs> no worries. I've, I've asked my husband to take mine out for a walk right now. So. <laughs> Um, so what, what, what are some kind of the, the, the tangible changes that you would, you would need to make as a result of this, or would you not, are you already kind of doing these things and it's just about doing that more? Well, you know, I have to say we're definitely not a Unilever or a Nestle or a Danone. Um, I wouldn't even say that where we are on sustainability or understanding where our, our whole, you know, from, from seeds to plate. Um, you know, really understanding that very clearly, um, we've got a lot of work to do. So I think as a company, it's it's going to be um, a path to go on. Um, some areas we've, you know, we've got a little bit more unlocked, but I think there's definitely going to be a fair bit of work that needs to be done and definitely very much a, cha a shift in the, the focus and the way the company operates and thinks. Because this for me as well is very much, um, an investment that the company has to make. Um, and we've been running as a company for many years on, you know, trying to make sure we, we uh, you know, um, where, can we, where can we value engineer out? Where can we try and save a cost? Whereas this is very much the opposite model. This is about putting the cost back in, to understand and to improve. Can you think of, and you talked about obviously sourcing of ingredients and that kind of thing. Have you... Have you got any ideas in terms of looking at that through the lens of Heinz culture is agriculture? What 
what could that mean for your sourcing in terms of, um, I don't know, any ideas for what you, yeah, what are the actual tangible uh, impact really, or actually like potential shifts that you, you could see? Yeah, I mean, I think that, um, you know, to me, that would really mean um, to really live those words, we would really need to look at, um, you know, how we grow things. Um, where we grow things, where we source things from, um, what's our footprint as well? You know, I think, you know, we need to look at those things as well. Um, you know, it, it to me it would be then not so much to be buying the cheapest beans, for example, not that we're doing that, but, you know, or, or not to be shipping things from one side of the world to another, but, um, you know, really making sure that we really live by those words. And it's almost like the next generation of, you know, making sure we um, are, are able to trace everything and understand the quality of everything. So it's going back to that initial Heinz philosophy um, and, and H.J. Heinz's thinking and really starting to live by that. Mm -hmm. So in terms of um, the, what you know about the, the kind of products that are already in the pipeline, so the, the things yep. that are already coming through that fit in that might fit in this proposition do you have an idea of what what specifically those might be yeah i mean i think probably for me very much the the movement in um plant-based foods you know i think if you if you look some of the especially in australia new zealand um you know a lot of new launches that are coming through everything's very much on the power of beans um understanding where it's growing understanding that you know it's almost like this superfood so i think definitely um, a big focus that we have, and if you sort of, um, I mean, it, even though it's not really so visible or reflected in our current sustainability um, ESG sort of documents, um, underarching behind that very, very, very big push that the company's moving towards is plant-based, plant-based proteins. And I think that very much fits in to this. And are there any kind of specific... Um products where that plant-based protein is being manifest at the moment? <laughs> I think definitely probably the leading markets is Australia, New Zealand and UK um, definitely have, you know, products that they're working with, obviously because they have a, a decent startup with, you know, beans businesses already, which is already a natural way to sort of, you know, continue to leverage the meals area. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, just to, I'm just trying to wrap my head around this. So they are, so Australia and New Zealand and the UK are working at Heinz are currently working with startups to see what, to see how they might be able to use bean protein in products. Is that correct? Um, sorry, no, they're not. I don't think there's any live projects with startups yet. Right. Um, I think there's just probably a lot more discussions that, that are being had because uh, those markets are probably more advanced in that space. Um, obviously, in the US as well, they're, you know, they're looking and exploring at different startups as well. Um, but I, I, there's none yet that uh, I'm aware of that have actually already formed. Okay. Do you think that that is um, kind of a way forward in terms of building out the portfolio would be through either working with startups or, or um, some sort Absolutely. of Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, because I think you know, we can't be the expertise at everything. And sometimes when you're such a big company, you're very caught up in your own bureaucracy. So I think having an, the innovation of a startup that has totally different ideas, different, different directions, different ways to execute in this space and a much faster way of getting, you know, getting things done and um, products sort of ready for market. I think there's definitely great um, opportunities in this. Got it. And Great. And then in terms of kind of what we currently have at Heinz um, in the moment, is there anything in our portfolio that might worry you from uh, the standpoint of this new positioning going forward? Anything that, that you think is going to be a challenge for us? Um, uh, probably from this perspective, there's nothing that really, really stands out. Um, nothing that really stands out. Um, because I think the, the focus that the company has is, you know, is really shifting sort of more towards mm, plant-based. Um, yeah, no, there's nothing that particularly, I would say, is a big problem area under the Heinz brand. Got it. For some of the other brands, that's a different story. Mm -hmm. 
you mean other brands within Kraft Heinz overall? Yes. Like, yeah. Heinz, got it. Um, great. So I'd love to hear uh, a little bit about your vision. So what is your vision for your area of the business given the new direction? So if you could kind of leave a legacy in this, in this new direction of the business, what, what would it be? What would you want it to look like? Yeah. Uh, for me, I think what I would love to see and um, is, you know, for us to be able to focus from for the Heinz brand of products from the beginning in terms of how we grow the products, um, having more connection with um, with the growers, understanding more that agricultural part. Um, how can we improve, um, you know, imagine we could grow beans and we could actually improve the soil consistency, the soil nutrition, or what's left after we've grown the, the beans. So how can we impact on making the land better and at the same time, making a more nutritious food as well. It's almost like, you know, being able to make a superfood that's going to be able to feed the population, the growing population of the world, um, but growing it in a better way on the planet. So I think for me, there'd probably be a need for some more, um, uh, more touch points with various, you know, universities that are experts in, in, in growing, in soil, in understanding the agricultural part um, to see how we could, you know, generate this sort of circle that would improve the land but also improve the, you know, the, the nutritional outcome of the product. So, you know, almost ending up with a super bean at the end. Mm -hmm. And if you can kind of sum this up um, in ways that are as tangible as possible, this kind of vision that you've laid out in maybe three from two. So moving from something that is where we are today to a place you'd like to be. Can you think of three things that you'd like to, to shift from where we are now to to something better, something different? Um, yeah, I think probably starting, um, you know, sort of from the beginning is, um, understanding um, where, we're, um, where we're growing our products. So where we're growing it, what conditions they're sort of growing on and getting closer to that part. I think that's really, really quite important because that not only impacts the nutritional value and the quality of the product that you get, but it helps you have a better understanding of how you can um, make those growing conditions and have more impact at that time. So growing, working more with farmers, et cetera, I think is hugely important. Mm -hmm. um, for my side of work in particular, um, I'm really interested to understand, you know, if we're going to be talking about, um, you know, plant proteins and Heinz being very much connected to, you know, plant proteins and driving that mm -hmm. in the future, what grows where? <laughs> what grows where best? Because you can't assume that you can grow the same crop, you know, everywhere mm -hmm. around the world. Because we're really looking now at how we can expand Heinz to feed the world in the best way, in the most nutritious way. Um, a, everyone eats different things. Secondly, different things grow in different countries. So I'd be really, at the moment, I'm already starting to do some work, understand the nutritional value of different legumes, grains, beans, etc., where they're growing, who eats what, to try and see how we can roll out a model that would go international. Mm -hmm. And if you could say, so you've talked about like moving to plant proteins, if you could kind of, if you could summarize in a similar way, if you could describe the current portfolio, what would we move, what would we be moving from? If we'd be moving to plant proteins, what are we now? Um, at the moment, I think a small percent, of what, I mean, even though 80% of our products are sort of plant protein based, um, or so vegetarian based, they're not really protein based. So apart from really the beans business, the rest of the business um, is mainly fruits and vegetables, whether they're canned, juiced, you know, made into ketchups, whatever. For me, I want to see, and, and, and those products, you only consume in smaller amounts. So a ketchup, you would only consume in a smaller amount. So we don't have as big of an impact on, you know, the share of the stomach. So to me, I think the focus for Heinz to really move into plant-based is into feeding the world. So feeding it through beans, meals, soups, you know, the stuff that, you know, is your main filler foods. So for me, um, that's the direction I think that they need to be focusing on driving plant proteins in, you know, okay. meals, snacks, the sort of the, the heavy volume stuff that fills your gut that's better for you. Mm -hmm. So 
So it sounds like you're saying something like from side of the plate to kind of feeding the world. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And what do you think, you've already mentioned a couple things above, but what do you think is needed to, to, to realize this vision? What do we need to do to get there? Um, look, I think within the business, there's a lot of passionate people about this. So now that I've really, my, my role changed what at the end of last year, pretty much into just driving nutrition sustainability, whereas before I drove, I managed culinary um, consumer insights, a number of different areas. I think the big shift I've seen is there's a lot of interest. I have so many young people from across the business, across the world that call that are really passionate. They want to get involved. They want to make a difference. They want the company to move in this direction. The biggest shift we need is to shift senior management and their thinking. So um, it, it's one thing that they have, you know, these sort of commitments or want to start moving in this direction. But there's very much still a lot of the old thinking, you know, like in terms of, you know, but this is an investment and what return will I get for it? And, um, you know, so apart from me throwing, you know, investors reports in front of them and constantly saying, we may be the big fifth biggest food company in the world, but quite often we're seen as one of the worst food companies um, because we're just not meeting basic sustainability measures. We're not being transparent. So I think for me, it's really selling it from the top to the top play top uh you know top leaders mm -hmm. um so rafa and his leads miguel his leads i mean obviously we've got people like rashida and jonah in the us that are fully you know this is their world as well um i'm hugely lucky that i have christine christina kens who's completely obsessed with this topic mm -hmm. um but i think it's there's a lot of the business unit leads, the business unit presidents, you know, because for them, it's a real shift. Okay. So how am I going to be making the money? You know what I mean? Like, you know, developing new flavors cells um, by doing this, what am, what, what am I going to get? And when am I going to get? So that I think is the biggest challenge. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like, um, I mean, I'd, I'd be interested to, to kind of know what, what you think, um, what do you think? Because you talked about aside from throwing kind of, a, 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 you know, just a um, kind of investment reports that then, what do you think would need to sway them? Like, what, what do they need evidence? Do they need, like, what, will, what will it take to get them on board with this type of thinking? You know, I think it's exposure. I think it's constant, um, constant exposure. I'm finding at the moment, I have the, um, I, I speak a lot at the, you know, Rafa's leadership meetings literally every month. Um, you know, I think it's the more you expose these people to how we're perceived, how we're tracking, the great things that we can do, the great things we've done. Um, a lot of the time they're not even aware of, you know, some of the great things we already have done because as a company we're terrible at communicating, especially externally, you know, and this is one of the areas we've always been pulled up on a lot is that um, we're not transparent with what we've done and we actually have done things, but we sort of keep everything in the back cupboard. Um, so I think very much with the leaders, it's exposure. And when they really see, um, you know, how other companies are performing or what they're doing, um, and, you know, I think there is an appetite to shift. It's just going to take some time. That leads me on perfectly to the next question was, are there any other companies that you think or any other brands or companies that you think are doing this really well? Um, yeah, well, look, I think, um, I think Nestle and Unilever are really absolutely at the top of the game. Um, I'd put us in, I wouldn't put us as we're sometimes perceived as in the bottom because I actually do think we've done a lot. We just haven't really told anyone about it. So I would put us in the, middle rank around Mondelez, Kellogg, um, you know, those sorts of companies. Um, I think I think we should be in the, one of the leading companies because if you look at our portfolio, we really have a reason to be playing and winning in this space. The only thing holding us back is ourselves. Um, you, know, if, um, you know, if Danone, who's basically a dairy company um, and puts everything in plastic, um, you know, if they can be seen as someone that's quite you know, forward moving in this space, there's absolutely no reason why someone like a Heinz can't be ahead of them. That's interesting. Uh, so one of the things that you've just kind of sparked in me a thought is that um, 
I think Danone has a has a lot to change in a yeah, way. They do. So they they can say like, well, we are dairy, we are plastic, we're part of the problem, we're trying to change it. Yeah. It's a bit of a different narrative than we've been doing this all along. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, again, I'm not saying one's better or worse. It's just an interesting. It's just an interesting when you look at the strategy. Yeah. Um, and and so I think in it's it's interesting in terms of kind of believability and and proof points to be able to say, well, we've made yeah. a small change, but that might, that might appear bigger if Danone does it in a way. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, something I found really interesting this year I've spent for well, the last, I don't know, six months, I've spent literally every two weeks having conversations with the Meridian Institute. So that's the Bill Gates group. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, in the past, we've always been by the nutrition index and a lot of these codes were reviewed really, really badly. Mm -hmm. um, this time we managed to get quite a bit of airtime with them to really just explain what we're doing, you know, who we are, what we believe in, what we've done, what we're doing. Um, and the, the one thing that they've been shocked about is that we actually have done quite a bit and we're not as bad as we're seen. It's just we never told anyone about it, you know. Mm -hmm. um, we've just been very secretive. So I think if the company actually went along this direction, they would realise we've probably already, we've already done a lot. We do already have stories to tell. Um, we're not starting from ground zero. We do have a lot to unlock still, yes. But I think we already have, we've already done quite a bit. So I think, um, you know, if the focus is there, we can start uncovering some of all the stuff that we've actually done and start building off that. So we would already have a story to start with. So, um I'm just kind of curious to go back to, you've said that Nestle Unilever, you mentioned Denon as well, but Yesley and Unilever at the top of the game. And what I'm hearing from you is saying that we're already doing a lot of the stuff that we're just not communicating it well. Yes. We're, not, we're not great at communicating. It, is communication what you think Nestle and Unilever are doing well, or do you think it's something else or a combination of? Yeah, something? I mean, I think they sing a lot about it. You know, I think that, um, you know, as soon as there's the latest thing, so suddenly all of a sudden, you know, it's all on packaging and they're, they're very quick at responding about what they're doing you know I'm not saying they're squeaky clean everywhere um, they might only have changed five percent of their packs but they'll start talking about it they start talking about their journey um, Unilever is very far off the metrics that they've set on a lot of the measures um, so when you look at their reporting um, you know they've still got a way to go but the thing that they do well is they constantly talk about it you know, um, whereas um, we don't really talk about it. And even in our sustainability report, it's, we don't really say that much, you know, and I think that we're quite conservative as a company. We sort of want to make sure everything's perfect before we say anything. But I think we can say a lot more. And I think we can say it faster. Um, even if I look at tomatoes, we know that whole journey right from the seed to the finished product, you know, um, our tomato ketchup, you know, this year now we're plant moving towards 100% sustainably sourced tomatoes. But we, we, we undersell the story, you know, in our communications. And I, I think we could do the same with beans. We can do the same with all tomato-based products. We can do the same with the fruits. We can do the same with, you know, fruit juices, etc. cetera. Um, so I think we just sort of sometimes undersell ourselves. Got it. A lot of sense. Um, those are all the questions for me. Uh, Tristan, do you have any questions? No, I don't think I do. I think it's been, yeah, really useful and really interesting. Um, no, I don't think so, off the top of my head. If I do, I, I, I do think of one this afternoon, I'll, I'll send over an email. But yeah, I think in the moment, and that was, yeah, really interesting, fascinating. Kathy, yeah. is there anything it's else? Exciting that... area. It's for me, I think this is really just um, so exciting and I honestly feel this is so the right move for Heinz to be doing um, and when I saw your questions I almost thought that maybe you heard me speaking somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> no yeah. it's, it's good to see we're all on the right track. Is there anything else that you think we've missed out or anything you'd like to add? No, no, um, no I think that's probably pretty pretty much it yeah, in a nutshell. If, any, if there's anything else that you want more clarification on or more information I'm happy to Happy to help out. Great. Amazing. Thank you so much for your time. Massively appreciate, um, yeah, you squeezing us in. And um, yeah, we're looking forward to, well, looking forward to you seeing where we get to. Yeah, definitely. <laughs>
Okay, thank you very much. Thanks, thank Kathy. you. Have a great day. Have a good afternoon. Bye. Bye. -bye.